Hello and welcome to Showbiz Buzz with Bruno, and I'm Michael Bruno, your host, brought to you by the ever-popular Mads Theater, and today I am thrilled to bring the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater folks with us, talking about their upcoming production and upcoming shows, so please help me welcome Emily Schrader Orvik and Nolan Dornfield. Feld. Feld. Dornfeld, right? Yep. Okay, Feld. i got to correct myself on that. So, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. coming today. So, Nolan, I'm going to start with you. Oh, boy. And it, yeah, I know. It's exciting. So, <laughs> uh, first of all, tell me a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and how you got involved in theater. Uh, well, I'm from Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. A um, little bit about myself. Well, I love to show emotion, love to act, cool. drama. And what was your third thing? Uh, how you got involved in theater? How in I got theater. involved? Well, like I said, uh, just said, I like to like show emotion and drama, and but I don't really like musicals. Oh. I know, I know. Oh. It's just oh. stab me in the heart. <laughs> yeah, my bad. <laughs> so, so obviously, the show you're in is not a musical, then, right? No. Nope. So tell me a little bit about what the show is and what it's about. Okay. Well, as the name would suggest, a mixed up fairy tale. It's one big fairy tale that's all mixed up. And so Cinderella is trying to find her way to the ball mm -hmm. to meet her prince, but her fairy, her fairy godmother is having a bad day. Oh. So she gets teleported to all these different places, like the dwarf's cottage and Rapunzel's castle and much more. So did somebody locally write this, or is this a show that's been produced in other places? Do you know? I I don't know it's off the top of my head. Places. Uh -huh. So it sounds to me, even though you hate musicals, it <laughs> sounds like Into the Woods. Do you know the musical Into the Woods? See, I mean, your your job now after oh the boy. show is over oh, no. is you have to listen to the musical Into the Woods by Stephen Sondheim. Okay. It's kind of the same thing. It's all these crazy characters that are in fairy tales and in things, and they all kind of get mushed together, and they all end up where? In the woods. <laughs> oh, oh, well, how did I, how did so, I guess that? I know. See, I know, I know, it's one of, the, one of those strange things about life. So tell me, <laughs> who do you play in this? I play two roles, uh -huh. Jacob Grimm and Prince Two, Cinderella's Prince. So is Grimm one of the Grimm brothers? Yep. Oh, so are you telling the stories? So not necessarily. So actually, we're the, so like, we're writing these stories, we're famous fairy tale writers, mm -hmm. And we're writing these stories, and they get mixed up. And so when Wilhelm goes to sleep, he dreams about this uh -huh. being all mixed up. Mm -hmm. So is this your first production with Beaver Dam? No. The theater? No. What other shows have you done? Uh, last year, I, for the same thing, I did, uh, what was it called? The, the animal one? The... Folk tales or something? Yes. Something like folk that. Folk tales. Folk tales, yeah. So this is your second time you've done this? Yep, so. second have, time. Have you worked with any other theater companies before this? Nope. So this is like your second time on stage doing an acting job, yep. right? So you obviously you must like it, right? Yeah. Because you said you like to be emotional and you yeah. like to show your emotions. So what other, like, have any other hobbies or any things you do when you're not doing theater? Uh, I like to play sports like basketball and baseball. Um, I like Tell me you didn't watch the Badger game last night. No, well, I did, <laughs> and it was you, miserable. I know. Oh, well, yeah, it wasn't worth watching, let me tell no. you. <laughs> uh, so what about other things, you know, uh, school-wise? Do you like, do you have certain subjects that you prefer more than others? Yeah, I like science. Oh. Writing is not something I would say I like. I'm good at it, but I don't like it. <laughs> That's interesting that you're good at something, but you don't like it. That's kind of interesting because usually people that really like something, they get really good at it. Yeah. So obviously you're not going to pursue a career in that field, right? No. <laughs> no. Do you think you'd ever want to pursue a career in theater? Probably. I yeah. think I could. And is there anything besides acting that you would might want to do? Have you done anything like backstage or like writing stuff? Or? Uh, no, I haven't. Is that something you may think you might want to do? I might do that. I'm... I haven't really gotten to, like, know that. I don't really know what you do, so I don't really know. Cool. I might. You can see him running the soundboard. Oh, yeah? Oh, boy. 
Oh, oh, all there, the buttons. There you no, go. I was just about to say too many buttons. No, there you so go. many you, things you, to you, screw up on. She just offered you a job, man. Say yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Shoot, is this an interview? Yeah, there you go. Always say yes. My, my my mantra to all the kids that I ever talk to is like, if anybody offers you something to do in the theater or in, in the entertainment world. And if it isn't something that you're going to hurt yourself or you really don't know how to do, like jump out of an airplane or you know, ride a bareback horse if you've never done it, always say yes to it. And then if you decide I mean, after you've done it, eh, I don't want to do that anymore, you have that experience. And you know, sure. okay, I'm, you know, I ran a soundboard, didn't like it, but I know how to do it. So that just in case somebody sometime, you're going to meet somebody and say, you know, we've got a paying job to run a soundboard. You're going to be like, well... How much money is it? When is it? <laughs> do I really want? I know I can do it. <laughs> you can make all the decisions. So if anybody ever gives you an opportunity to do anything besides acting, which we all know you're already great at, um, that my advice to people is always, you know, say yes to the opportunity, and you might find something that you really like doing that you didn't yeah. think you'd like doing before. You no, know, this should be called tips from Bruno <laughs> because these are. These are uh, in the back of my mind. That that is the most wonderful thing anybody could ever say to me. I love that. <laughs> but yes, I I those are those are my tips to, to people in the theater and entertainment industry. Um, so do you just because you don't like musicals? What kind? Is there music that you like? Could, like other kind of music well, that's around? I like country. <laughs> you like country? Okay. Mm -hmm. So if there was a country musical, you'd probably go for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> um, so and what, who are your favorite country artists? Oh, boy. Um, Kip Moore, Moore um, and Blake Shelton. Blake Shelton. See, I thought yeah. for sure you were going to say Dolly Parton. <laughs> no, no? Not so much? No. Nickelback? Not so much. I've never even heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> A, a, a product endorsement <laughs> right here from Nolan. Cool. Um, so um, would you think you're going to continue to do other shows with Beaver Dam? Yeah, I think so. Are there shows like coming it. up that you're kind of excited about you may be auditioning for? I I don't even know what shows are coming up. Well, oh, what a perfect boy. segue to talk to Emily about what other shows are coming up for your season. We've got all sorts of shows coming up for our 60th season. We're doing Susical in August, which is a whole family show. That's our main stage musical. Mm -hmm. And so we want, the director has said he really wants families involved. Um, we're also doing Grease for the middle school kids. That's part of our Teletale Theater program. And it's a version of Grease that is the school version. So some of the topics that are maybe a little bit more mature have been taken out of that script. Uh, but our director has had it sort of tested and pre-read with some of her folks that they say, oh, yeah, this still flies as a good as a good musical. And then uh, for the youngest Teletale kids, which are the elementary school level kids, uh, we're doing Disney's Finding Nemo Jr. So that okay. should be a really fun show as well, where the kids get to take all those characters under the sea and go out on some great adventures on our stage. And because we've got such great programs like Class Act, which is actually a class that goes on after school during the school year that you're involved in, it helps the kids be prepared so that they understand how to work together in an ensemble and what cues are and, and blocking and some and projecting. And it's all the great things that kids benefit for from knowing when they're just out in life, that they're more confident. I mean, Theater, wouldn't you say theater gives you a lot of skills that you're able to take out in your everyday life that helps yeah. you? Yeah. So that's where we think it's really cool that they can do all of that right after school in our facility. So, Norm, did you take those classes before you did the shows, or did you do that in between your first show and this, this upcoming show? So... The second thing you said, I don't even, I can't even repeat it. I so just, you, you did a show and then you took the classes and now you're doing this show. Other way around. Other way so around. So I took, the, took classes, the classes, then I did the show, then I, I'm taking the classes, then I'm doing this show. So you've taken the classes for two years. Three years. Three so years. Because oh, well, the first pro. year. You're a pro. The first year they weren't doing a play. They just did these acting classes. Oh, so this really gives the kids a chance to take everything that they learn and put it into practice. And so it's really part of what helps Beaver Dam build this really great, really strong theater program. I mean, our high school 
Theater, the the area high school production, mm -hmm. which is Anastasia, which I forgot to mention, which is oh, coming up too. Such a good show. They are, I mean, those get lots of Jerry Award nominations, mm -hmm. and because and it's the kids have built their skills, but they're still just because kids have built their skills up from when they were little doesn't mean there isn't a role for everybody too. And so it's really important that while the kids that have great experience can do great things, kids that have had, and even adults that have had no experience can also come to the stage and do really great, really fun things and find new areas that they never expected that they could excel in. So do the, are the classes just for um, acting and stage work or do, do you do behind the scenes things as well for them to, to learn stagecraft? They have done sessions where they do stagecraft and we're continually exploring how can we expand that. We have one sound tech now who's um, a person in high school, um, but he is regularly available to do sound for us. Uh, so we continue to expand and allow these kids to develop their talents and see what things they're interested in, whether it's figuring out how to put the stage together or do lights or do sound effects. So that's something that we found is really important. And now that we're coming out of the time of restriction from the pandemic, yeah. it makes it a lot easier for us to be able to be together and offer opportunities and workshops and classes to do things. And so we're continuing to build on that. So is the series that, that um, the mixed up fairy tales, is that the only series that are non-musicals? Is the rest of all, all your other shows musicals? All the other stuff for our summer season this year is musical, but we the selection committee reviews and we'll make different selections based on the proposals that come in so that we have a really good mix of entertainment. We just wrapped up doing an improv show for a weekend just to present something different for our audience. We also host a number of concerts, concert series. In fact, we have ABBA Mania coming um, to the stage in May. We also host the Paddle City Big Band, which is a, a swing jazz group. Um, so we're able to really bring a number of entertainment options to people at the theater. And because the theater is ADA compliant, mm -hmm. it's easy for everybody to get to and come and enjoy. So it really embodies the whole premise of entertainment for everyone, which is really what we're all about. And so you can see with the selection, we're really, really trying to do that. And it is a beautiful theater. I mean, I've been in it several times and it, 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 I, I'm so impressed that Beaver Dam has this facility because it's really a beautiful facility. They did great work on it. It's fabulous. Yeah. Uh, so Nolan, you're going to have to get on the board to get more non-musicals because I'm all here with musical, 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 right, buddy? Why I <laughs> order? <laughs> uh, so, um, did you, uh, so this show opens March 30th. It's one performance on March 30th. Oh, one performance only? One Dude, performance you only. got one shot at it. Oh, man, don't it's screw intense. anything up. I know, right? <laughs> you got to come out and see him. Wow, that's, that's amazing that you're only doing it one time. But it should be a really fun family event. Oh, it's, sure. We realize it's Easter weekend. Right. But it's March 30th, so you never know what the... So come on in to the theater and have some family-friendly fun. It's a show that I would think grandmas and grandpas could get a good laugh out of. Aunties and uncles might enjoy. I think cousins should be in the audience to see their other cousins up on stage having a great time, you know. Everybody has to go and see Nolan. That's the exactly. whole point, right? <laughs> exactly, right? Like, I'm the star of the show. <laughs> I had a boy. <laughs> he has no confidence whatsoever at all. <laughs> the theater program is working. Exactly, it is working. Well, we're going to take a short break and, 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 and show some clips of the sort. And I thank you for coming. And yeah. we're going to bring a next guest in and continue with more of Showbiz Buzz with Bruno. <laughs>
And we are back with part two of the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater segment. Mm -hmm. And we've swapped out Nolan because <laughs> he's got so many commitments now and so many jobs <laughs> and career opportunities mm -hmm. in that interview that we're going to bring in Diane Lutz. Thank you for coming, Diane. Well, thank you for inviting us. It's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful. So tell us a little bit about the production that you're involved in. Well, I'm directing a world premiere. It's entitled Brand New Life, a Dust Bowl musical written by Lori Brooks and Paul Carroll Binkley. So it's, uh, as it's, as I said, it's a world premiere. And are those local? Are they local people? No, not at all. Oh, both, okay. uh, both of the creators are quite uh, accomplished, award-winning composer, musician, playwright. Uh, Lori, for example, has done quite a bit of work with the Kennedy Center, commissioned work with them. Um, Paul is a, a composer from Nashville. And if you were to see their resumes, they're, you know, pretty long. And they're just, they're, they're fabulous. And the exciting thing is they're going to be in Beaver Dam. They've already come to Beaver Dam. Oh, wow. for our, right, for our original read-through. And it, uh, Paul worked with the musicians. Lori worked with, with the cast. And they'll be back for our opening weekend. And did you say this is a world premiere for the show too? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So how in the how did that come about that 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 you got the the honor it of, is an of honor. being the world mm -hmm. premiere for this? It is an how honor. How did that come about? Well, um, back in two thousand two, I did a one of Lori Brooks plays called The Wrestling Season, which uh, is a TYA piece, theater for young adults, and uh, it, it had a tremendous impact on the students. And on a whim, I contacted her because we, we both have an NYU connection. We both went to NYU as grad. I didn't know her then, but I contacted her and I said, I think you should come to Beaver Dam and see this production. And we kind of hemmed and hawed, she hemmed and hawed a little <laughs> bit back and forth. Uh, she had no idea who I was. Right. She knew the program director who, you know, knew, who knew me at NYU. But um, ultimately I said, come on, you'll have a good time. And so she did. She loved our production of the wrestling season. And since then, I've done four other of her plays. And when um, it was in 2017, she and Paul Carroll Binkley had uh, were participating in the new play workshop at NYU. And so when I heard about that, I, you know, I, co I contacted her. And then here we are. That's 2017, quite a few years later. Um, in between time, you know, she sent me the script and I read it and I really liked it. But when Paul Carroll Binkley sent me the demo tape from NYU of the music, I mean, it was a done deal. I said, I really want to do that. And Lori and Paul talked about it and they thought it would be a great idea to, uh, to have the premiere of this or, um, right here at Beaver Dam. Cause Lori was familiar with my work and she was familiar with the community and, she said it'll be a great time and it'll be a great production. So that's how it all came about. Uh, it's it's interesting how, you know, way back in 2002, um, ends up here now 2024. We've we've grown quite a bit in, in terms of our friendship, but also in in in, in our work together in the theater. Um, I think it was in 2007. I went to the Nashville. No, excuse me, the Coterie Theater in Kansas City. And Lori's play, Beyond the Sea, Selkie Girl play, um, a man came in during a rehearsal, and he talked to Scott Copeland, the director, and he said, here's the music that I've written for it. And I thought, that's beautiful music. No idea at the time that it was Paul Carroll Binkley. So he's been working forever with you know theaters. Uh, he's a traveling musician with Alabama. He's worked with all sorts of folks in the theater, uh, composing for all sorts of venues. So uh, he has a vast resume, as does Lori. So just by chance, here we are doing Brand New Life, a Dust Bowl musical. That's an amazing story. Uh, so for people that maybe don't understand or know, what does the term Dust Bowl musical mean? Well, <clears throat> it's a historic look at the Dust Bowl time, the Dirty 30s, they called them, <laughs> it, and it takes place in Oklahoma. But one of the things that I want to stress is that this is not a gloom and doom musical. This is all about hope. This is all about family, love, perseverance. It's the story of a family who, like many families, were struggling. And uh, a young girl, the, the father 
the father leaves the farm one day and she has to go find him, not knowing why he left. Well, he left to go find work, to come back and help his family. And so in her journey to find her father, she meets up with a number of people um, along the way. One is the famous aviator Jimmy Doolittle, who won all those uh, speed races when he originally was, and then, of course, w- during World War II, an actual character, uh, act- a real person, Jimmy Doolittle. Um, and Jimmy Doolittle offers advice, and his advice that he that he sings about is how we have to take care of the earth. He said, all these beautiful things in here, this this could have been stopped. And it's, so in many ways, it's prescient to what we're experiencing mm-hmm. now in um in our environment and uh, so jimmy doolittle helps in that way or he has a great message um the next person she meets along the way is ma blackburn and she teaches ellie the young girl looking for her father all about hope and she sings this fabulous song called hope is the yeast that rises the bread and i mean all the songs are quite different, but they are, like I said, when I heard Paul's demo tape of the music for the musical, I just fell in love with it immediately. And then finally she meets a homeless man here in Oklahoma, they're in Oklahoma, who has come there from Illinois looking for work because he, he needed to find something to help his family survive. And so it's a great scene where he teaches her or her eyes are open to why her father walked away. It wasn't because he was escaping them, but he was out to try and find something to help the family survive. So uh, I just, I can't say enough about the music, number one, all the different different types of songs. They're, they're exciting, they're funny, they're powerful. Uh, there's one song called Tiny Baby, which seem, it, it's it's a beautiful song, but it, in some ways you, you are sad because you're worried about this baby who's about to be born. It, it's so historically accurate, but yet, like I said, it's not a gloom and doom production. It's a musical. It's about hope. It's about family. It's about perseverance. And um, I just can't say enough about it. And it's so exciting because it's a bra- brand new life, but it's also a brand new musical, mm-hmm. and we're we're doing it. And Paul and Lori just can't wait to come see what we've done with it because it's never been uh, had a full fledged uh, production. They workshopped it at NYU, and uh, and now here we are. And it's going to be staged with an orchestra. Yeah, uh, four piece orchestra, stand up bass, violin, guitar, and piano. Nice. So it's it's great music. Now, they're going to be here on opening night, and we're going to have an opening night gala for them. I think you should come. <laughs> uh, and when will that be? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Um, no, I'm April, April 5th. April 5th. April, April 5th? Is, yes. that, right. is that a Friday? Friday? Friday night, yeah. And they're going to be there, right? They're, well, they're, they'll be there all weekend, yes. Oh. But we have a special gala for them before the uh, before the curtain on that night. And so people can, they're not going to give any presentation. We'll just introduce them and people can can talk with them and ask them about the whole process. And they probably will ask the question that you asked, why Beaver Dam? So, I mean. <laughs> why not? <laughs> why That's not? My exactly. That's my answer to that question. <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about you. How did you get started in, in directing and how did you come to the Beaver Dam community to direct? Well, <clears throat> um, I'm a graduate. I'm a badger. I graduated in uh, 75, actually, in communication arts education with a theater emphasis. And so back then they didn't have the theater education degree, but it was an emphasis within communication arts. And so I started teaching communications, and I also have a license in English and drama. So I had the three licenses, and I started teaching at Beaver Dam High School in 1980. And then in 1983, my husband and I got involved with community theater, and um, I've been directing ever since. I have uh, a master's degree from NYU in educational theater. So whenever I approach a directing project, I do approach it from an educational standpoint and uh, explaining why we're doing what we are and you know why we're doing the certain warm-ups that we are and before we begin. And it's just, um, I just love that part of it. So directing, telling people what to do. 
and she's yeah. fabulous at it. Yeah, she yeah, cast, been there, been there, done that. Yeah. She cast me in an ensemble <laughs> and got me hooked in the hooked back in the theater again. So mm-hmm. it's I love the opportunity to work with Diane. Um, she's she's she expects a lot from you. Mm-hmm. Which is absolutely what the audience expects to see when they come to a production. And so Diane's productions, as all of them at Beat Act, are really top-notch because the whole directorial team really strives to get the best out of all of the performers. And the performers come really striving to give their absolute best, too. So it's it's really it's a wonderful sort of relationship that, that we get to have with the audience. So And people like her bring the best out on lots of us. Cool. So as opposed to Nolan, is your emphasis on musical theater? <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, interesting. No, it's, uh, I love all kinds of theater. Uh, for example, two years ago, I directed Death of a Salesman because I felt like we needed to do that at Beaver Dam Community Theater. There are a lot of classics that I absolutely love. And it, it was a fabulous production, which included an 18-month vacation because it was COVID time. Oh, yes, indeed. Right. And uh, the interesting thing is, two weeks before we were to open, the woman playing Linda Lohman was too ill to continue. She had she had contracted COVID, and it, you know, technically, you know, they give you those month the, those weeks when you should be all right. She mm. didn't recover as quickly as she should have. Ugh. So we were two weeks out, no Linda Loman, and uh, I was advised to call a woman named Holly, and I said, Holly, here's the situation, and she and her husband were on speaker, and she said, I'll do it, and so I said, Well, we can figure out as far as lines, because no, I'll know the lines. Yeah, I'll know the lines. She was fabulous. Wow. And interestingly enough, she's my Ma Blackburn. (laughs) The hope is the yeast that rises the bread. I mean, it's a fabulous song. Well, like I said, they're all fabulous songs. Um, In the last spring, I did You Can't Take It With You, another classic. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say, oh, everybody does that. I had directed it twice with high school students over my very long career. And it was fun to do it with adults. Fun to do it with a grandpa who I didn't have to put gray in his hair. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> who was who was younger than maybe the daughter Essie or the granddaughter, and I mean, I'm loved. I I had a great time directing high school students. Absolutely loved it. And again, with an educational theater bent to it. I mean, it, it's it's. Uh, I used to say to them, if I don't teach you anything else, I'm going to teach you work ethic, and. And and I always would quote some of my professors, the, the the actors who get work are the ones who are directable, which I was told many times through my education, which is true. It you is know, true. It, it's very yeah, true. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I've been fortunate to have a good educational background and be able to, to share that with folks. So... Um, yeah, I like directing all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. So for this, obviously, you very rare to get the opportunity to do a world premiere of a musical. Correct. So you have no prejudice over like, well, they did it this way. Right, Well, right. when it was off-Broadway, it was this kind of thing. When it went to Broadway, they changed this mm-hmm, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So when you auditioned people, mm-hmm. what were you looking for in your auditioners for this particular production? I'm just curious to know. Well, um, I don't think I approached it in any different way. And in fact, when you talked about productions, that you know, many times people will, will say, well, I've got to go see it because they're performing it here or there and I want to direct it. I, I say to people, stay away from it. And I say, don't, don't watch the movie. This is not <laughs> a film. This is right. live theater. And so I look for people who uh, I, I like to do in my, my auditions, I like to do creative things things not just oh here's the script Mm -hmm. go read it tell read it for me but i like to have them create things on their feet and we do activities like that um for example one of them i'll I'll give i'll break them up into groups and i'll give them maybe a a a line not from the necessarily from the play but i'll just give them some kind of writing prompt and i'll give them oh about five or six minutes create something create a create a slideshow a series of tableaus that that explain this and um, they usually have a lot of fun with it, actually. So it's somewhat improvisational, but not on the spot improv. Uh, and I never, I never force people to read cold. I'll assign them, and I'll say, "All right, the three of you go and read this section. Mm-hmm. Come back in about five minutes, and when you're ready, and then read it for me." So, um, so I didn't approach it in any different way than I normally do, just because 
I always feel like it's it's worked for me before, and you know, certainly when it's a musical, the musical ranges of the singers are important. Truly, and do you have a different musical director, or are you the musical director? As no, well? I'm not the musical director. I have, I have a fabulous musical director, vocal director. I worked I've worked with her many many times. Her name is Marsha Paul, and she is fabulous. She's Again, an educator. She and I worked together when we did high school productions. She's also done vocal direction for me for community theater productions. Because that's so, pretty crucial. It, it is if, absolutely. If you, if, you know, if you don't have, if you can't sit down and play that piano and, right. or be or be the whole orchestra, right? You've got to have a, a team person right. that you know because you can say, okay, that person sounded great, right. but can they you know can they sing those notes right exactly Will they, can they sustain right. those notes mm-hmm. Will they blend with the duets I mean, those are right. all things that right. A person who is vested right. in music right. yeah. will know that. It, you know, so every right. time I've done a musical, I've been blessed with having a really good musical director and a vocal mm-hmm. Group, you know, mm-hmm. who can actually do that part of it. Because, right. mm-hmm. you know, I rue the day that I was in third grade learning piano with the nun who smacked me on my knuckles <laughs> with the ruler. And it was like, I guess I won't be playing piano for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you thank need, you, you, thank you, sister. I remember you dearly. <laughs> you need to talk to my husband who's right around the corner oh. here. I mean, his, we were just talking about nuns, weren't we, Patrick, oh. on the way down? He's got a lot of Catholic school stories. Oh, yeah. So when you do yes. nun sense, I'll be more than happy to come in I don't and think play he... Sister Mary amnesia for you. I don't, I don't think he even wanted to see that. So, uh, But that's great. That's, that's... Yeah, yeah. Marsha Marshall, was a, a performance major in piano, and she was the vocal teacher at the high school, taught vocal music. And she's just, I know David, our managing director, came up to us. Uh, came up to me. He said, "You know, Marsha is fabulous. She's the best vocal director I've ever worked with, and she is. She's she's demanding, and um, that's what we need. And that's what I, that's why that's why she and I are are a good team." She said that she won't work with anybody but me because she knows that I'm going to be just as demanding as she is. Because if if that's if we don't match, then that could cause problems. But uh, but the beautiful thing is with Paul. Carol Binkley, the 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 uh, composer, connected with the project. There was uh, one of the solos was not in the character's range, and so he retooled it for her. Wow! So that's yeah. a gift. Oh, it is right, absolutely. And and uh, I just uh, he's just a great guy. He um, he he and Lori both were here for a weekend in February when he first began the project, and. So it was wonderful to meet him. Of course, I had known Lori for over 20 years, and so we had a lot of fun, but we also had, got a lot of work done. So I think that I think they, the performers are a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, a little nervous isn't necessarily bad. Right, right. Because, oh, I'm so nervous, I'm so nervous. You don't want, you don't want them to be too cocky and think <laughs> they know it all. When... <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, I, cocky doesn't get very far with me <laughs> at all. Uh, so it's interesting we have have uh, 16 adults and one one child. His name, the character name is Robert, and he's 10 years old. And I swear he's going to be the hit just because of the funny lines that Robert has. But but all the characters are interesting, and they're, it's diverse, and um, I don't know, I just can't say enough about it. It sounds fascinating. Like I, I'm always, I'm always up for people that mm-hmm. take a chance and do mm-hmm. an undone or, or a right. world premiere of a show right. because you, you, you can't have any expectations of that. Right. You, mm-hmm. As an audience mm-hmm. member, I mean, right. You have to like be really open minded. People say, "I'm seeing a world premiere of something right. that's never been on a stage mm-hmm. before," mm-hmm. and I find that's that's right. Is an audience member and as a d- director and a mm-hmm. performer, I just think that's a wonderful gift for you know to give to an audience mm-hmm. to have that opportunity to see something right. like that. We also have in um, where the theater is located, right across the street is the Dodge County Center for the Arts. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, about a year ago, because I've been thinking about this for about a year. I'm getting kind of (laughs) tired physically. (laughs) Um, But I I approached them about a year ago and I said, you know, this is what we're going to be doing in the spring. What about a a pop-up exhibit about the Dust Bowl and the Depression? And they're having one. They, Very cool. Right. Yes. Absolutely. And so, uh, I think it. I think they're probably installing it today, and they'll they'll be open their regular hours. But then on days of performance, they're going to be open earlier, so people can walk over right across, literally right across the street before a performance, and then they're going to stay open after the performance, uh, a little bit later, so people will 
we'll get a chance to look at that. They local artists have created things. I know they have have uh, some authentic quilts from the time, some wow. depression glass. Uh, I, I keep getting people sending me, um, texting me pictures of things that they've created, and it's just really, really fun. Mm-hmm. That's great. And the dates are when? When does it open? Opening night is April 5th, and then it runs until April 14th. Now, there are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're quiet, but, mm-hmm. you know, so it's the weekends. It is part of BDAC's main stage series. Mm-hmm. So if you buy your tickets before April 14th, then you can also buy a ticket package to see Anastasia, Susicle, and Lumberjacks in Love in fall, and you get 20% off your ticket price. Wow. So you get to pick, and that means you've, you've made this wonderful commitment to the arts, mm-hmm. and you've got your seats, and you say, honey, we have to have a date because we're committed to this. <laughs> but the, the great way to open it up is with this wonderful show that you can come in and really immerse yourself in. And when you think that we're coming up on the century of all these things happening, mm-hmm. right. we're losing right. the people who can tell the stories. Mm-hmm. And so it's really, it feels really important to honor those stories mm-hmm. and maybe dig back into the family history a little bit and find out how the Dust Bowl and the Great Depression impacted your family. So it, mm-hmm. for me, it's it's as I've been watching Diane prepare and my husband is a member of the ensemble that we've been looking at it going, oh, this is really far away history, but it's really close mm-hmm. history too. Mm-hmm. And so there's something to that that feels really important about this production mm-hmm. as well. Right. It the the opening number takes place in 1914, and that's the song, the title song, "Brand New Life." And all these people are looking at pamphlets of Oklahoma, of places that really didn't even exist. But everybody's going west to find this brand new life. And then with a light change and the music change, and we leap ahead to the middle of the Depression, and the second song is If It Rains. It's just awesome. Cool. And are any of the actors in this performance actors you've worked with before in other shows? Yes, quite a few of them, actually. Mm Mm-hmm. So how great for them to actually create a role. Right, right. Exactly. That, And that's what a lot of them have said. This is so cool. Nobody's ever created this role before. And they're not watching the movie either. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. I know. That's a, now, you have to make sure that, that the author, when they publish, is it published? Yes, it's published. So will it right. will it say that yes, the it world will. premiere is in Beaverdam, Wisconsin? Yes, it will. And you, mm-hmm. you as the director? Mm-hmm. Right. a girl. Yeah. I, their, their, plans, their plans are... Uh, to, uh, to next time they put it up will probably be in Nashville, and um, <clears throat> it's a family show, as Lori put it, the playwright. It's appropriate for ages nine to ninety, and so as they have worked on, they said this is a pl- this is a musical for anybody, I- any mm-hmm. age really, and so um, that that's nice too that that you don't have to worry about you know bringing your family to a main stage sure. that hasn't been designated as a children's performance. So, um, yep, as she said, your names will all be in it. Excellent. Right. Excellent. Well, I, I, I'm I thrilled that you both came all the way from Beaver Dam. It's really not that far. <laughs> Just up 151. So the Madison crowd. See, the Madison should crowd. Come on up and check it out. We've got absolutely. lots of terrific things happening. And so Brand New Life is a place to start and then just keep coming. And again, We've also got all these auditions coming up, and we're really, we're really a regional player. So we're happy to have folks. Our summer productions, we've had kids from Sun Prairie. They've come from Montello. They've come from over in the Sheboygan area. So really, we're a nice central place for people to come and be entertained Mm -hmm. or be part of the entertainment because... Again, being on stage, as Nolan proved, there's lots of good stuff that happens when you're on stage. <laughs> Absolutely true. Right. We have well, we have people from Sun Prairie, Ripon, Green Lake in this production. Wow. Mm-hmm. So. Well, hopefully this will be the last snow day, so they won't have to travel <laughs> and worry about them having, <laughs> having to travel in the snow. Right. We haven't had that this year. Last year when we were doing You Can't Take It With You, the last spring... That we we had to cancel a number because I think it was what one oh, day of the week yeah, it was, was it Thursday yeah, it was every horrible. Thursday yeah. we had a snowstorm and yes. so yes. Yeah, yeah but it's yeah it's very exciting it's very exciting I hope you come I I'm looking forward to it and I will clear off our schedule to make sure that we can but you know I have to go see Nolan too 
because I have to see Noah, and it's a one-shot deal to see that kid. <laughs> kids will be thrilled to see you. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you both for coming today. Thank you, Nolan, for being the exceptional guest. And we will see you next time in a week from Saturday right here on this very, very lovely stage at the Michael Bruno Studios. Thank you, Ben. It. Thank you, Jim. Thank you again for coming. Thank, thank you, our you. audience, for being here today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.